Hey, Liam Ward here at LearnTheHarmonica.com. Today we're looking at how to follow harmonica tab and why we use it. Don't go anywhere. So harmonica tab is a very, very popular way of learning to play the harmonica by looking at which holes and which uh, direction you're going to be playing the harmonica. So tabs vary and there are lots of different versions out there, but I'm going to give you my version, which is a very popular version, and it will help you to follow my YouTube lessons and lots of others as well. So when you see my tab, any positive numbers, so if it just says, for example, four, they are blow notes. So you can assume anything just a number is a blow note. So you're going to take the harmonica and breathe out through it, trying to isolate that single hole. Any negative or minus numbers, so if you've got that little line before the number, that's a draw note. So you're going to breathe in, you're going to breathe in through the harmonica and isolate that single note. Now to bend a note, each forward slash, so the diagonal line, means a semitone or half step bend. So if you see one of those, for example, if you see minus three and then one forward slash line, that's three draw with a semitone bend. If you see minus three with two of those diagonal lines, that's three draw with a whole step, full tone, bend. So each of those lines is going to tell you uh, a, another half step. Now overbends are symbolized by a little star, a little asterisk, which is going to tell you to play an overblow or an overdraw. So if you can see four blow and then a little star up there, then that is the four overblow. If you can see, for example, eight draw, and then a little star, that's the eight draw overdraw. Okay, so that star can mean both overblow and overdraw. Now sometimes you'll see what looks like a bigger number than the 10 holes on the harmonica. So we've only got one to 10, but you might see, for example, four, five, or 45, you might think it is. That just means both holes played together. That's four, that's five, play them together, it's very common in folk music, so in some of my tabs I have that kind of double note thing. With the draw notes, if you see minus 45, that just means minus 4 and minus 5 draw together. I don't write minus 4, minus 5, because you might think that they're played after each other instead of together. So if it says minus 45 or minus 4, 5, that's two draw notes played together. Okay, so... You will also see a couple of other symbols in my tab. You might see some kind of dotted, broken lines. Sometimes I use that to tell you how many beats a note is held for. It just means that you've got a bit more of an idea of the rhythm of what you're doing. And you'll also sometimes see a little arrow across the screen. That either means, if it's between two notes, it means I'm sliding from one to the other. Or uh, if it's just from nothing, to uh, and then an arrow and then a note. It means I'm kind of, I'm not being strict about where you're sliding from, but you're sli you are sliding and landing on a note. So, it's sometimes called a slide or a glissando or a rip. They all mean the same thing. And then finally, sometimes I put brackets in my uh, tabs. Now this is. A bit of a loose definition, but basically I'll use it for either grace notes, so passing tones, rhythmic filler, kind of rhythmic parts of the song, rather than melodic parts, uh, or sometimes just kind of optional. So if something is so quiet uh, that you don't necessarily need it, or it's just kind of up to you whether you do it or not, then I'll put it in brackets so it's kind of denoted as optional. So I want to talk a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of using tab now. But before I do, I just want to mention some of my older videos have a different tab uh, form. And that's just because I used the tab form that my first teacher, Matt Walklet, used. I don't know if he still uses it, but it was B for blow and D for draw. One I've described today is for my current videos and there's hundreds of them like that. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, why do we use tab? 
the great thing about Tab is you don't need to read music to use it, so you don't need any musical experience. It's hopefully quite intuitive because it's just telling you in terms of positioning on the harmonica and your breath uh, direction what you're doing, which is kind of, I think, quite a natural physical way to interact with, with what you're doing. And massive advantage that it gives you is if you take a tab for a C harmonica, but you want to play that song in a different key, all you need to do is pick up another harmonica, follow the same tab, and you are playing that song in a different key immediately. So if you've got 12 different keys of harmonica, you can play that song in 12 different keys just by picking up the different harmonicas. It's one of the great benefits of the way the harmonica is set up for different keys for different songs, rather than being an instrument where you play all the same key, all the keys on one instrument, such as the guitar. One of the difficult things when it comes to reading music with harmonica is that if you're going to try to take what's written in terms of sheet music and apply that to what you're doing physically, so you need to know where to go on the harmonica, you're going to need 12 different relationships between what's on the page and what you're doing on the harmonica. So let me explain that a little bit. Let's say you see a middle C written on, on the uh, sheet music, then you would know where that is on a piano. It's going to be kind of exactly the same place every time. Assuming you're not retuning your guitar to a strange tuning, you're going to know where it is on the guitar as well because it's a one-to-one -one relationship, one way of playing that note. Now, we have got maybe 12 different harmonicas. There's going to be 12 different ways of playing that C note. It's going to be, you know, a, a one blow on a C harmonica. It's going to be a two draw on an F harmonica. It's going to be a bend on, you know, a C sharp harmonica. It, it's kind of, no, it's not actually, it's going to be a three draw. Um, uh, but it's going to be a bend on different harmonicas. You would have to sit and work out all those different relationships. Now, one of the ways that people get around this is to, if they really want to read sheet music on harmonica, is to always read the music in C. So always use sheet music in C. So there's a one-to-one -one relationship. So you're kind of imagining you're playing in C, even if you're using a G harmonica, for example. So you're going to pick up your G harmonica and follow the sheet music, which is in C, and you'll be playing in G, but you'll be reading the sheet music. Now that works as long as you've got sheet music in G, but if you haven't got the sheet music in the key of G, if the sheet music's in G and, and you've got your G harmonica, you're going to have the same problem. You're going to have, you, you, if you haven't learned the 12 different relationships, it's not, it's not going to work for you. So that's a downside of using sheet music and the, another plus point to using tab, you're going to not have that problem. You're going to be able to just use the tab for any key. Now there are uh, disadvantages rather to tab as well. You don't get told the rhythm. So I did say that I put kind of dashes for how long you hold a note sometimes, which is a little bit of a tip of the hat to trying to give you a bit more than just the notes. But if you don't know the song, if you've never heard the song and you see the tab, it's going to mean nothing to you. You're going to have to listen to the song and soak up the, the rhythmic kind of spacing and all that kind of stuff. And I know that doesn't work for everyone. I know some people really want to read sheet music. You've just got this strange situation with the harmonica where you've got all these different keys and tab kind of gives you a lot in certain ways. So I kind of recommend to most harmonica players, assuming they're not playing chromatic harmonicas, where it's a bit different, because you can play in all different keys, I recommend that people get used to tab and get used to listening to songs to pick up how they sound. For me, that was always the way I learned, and I think it is a natural way of learning music. It's just some people aren't familiar with it, but I think it can be learned and it can be used by everyone.
So that's a little bit of insight into how to use Harmonica Tab and why you might want to use it. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson with me today. I'm going to be back very soon with another Harmonica lesson. Do click like and subscribe to my channel for free Harmonica lessons every single week. I take requests for lessons, so please put your comments beneath the video and you can email contact at learntheharmonica.com and you can find me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Just search learntheharmonica.com on those websites. Until I see you again, enjoy your practice and I'll see you soon. Cheers.